Throughout the years, there's been many wacky characters that have appeared throughout Mario's adventures. Some have come and gone, some have stuck around, but today I want to talk about a specific case that really sticks out to me. And as you can tell by the title, it's the purple-clad plumber Waluigi. Although I don't think that's technically correct. Waluigi doesn't seem to actually be a plumber. In fact, they don't really know what he actually does besides appear in almost every Mario spinoff. As many of you know, Waluigi was created during the development of Mario Tennis for the N64 by Camelot designer Fumihide Aoki. Hopefully I pronounced that right. Specifically, he was created as a doubles partner for Wario and as a rival for Luigi, as Wario is for Mario. Waluigi is essentially the same concept for Wario, but with Luigi instead. However, not everything seems to translate well when you take certain aspects of Wario's creation and apply them to Luigi. For instance, Wario's name. The W in Wario is just the M in Mario's name flipped upside down, making for a pretty clever naming convention. Conversely, with Luigi, you can't really do the same thing, as an upside down L isn't really a letter. The same thing kind of goes for Waluigi's hat logo too. Whereas the other three characters wear caps with their respective initials, Waluigi is forced to wear this inverted L. One more interesting thing I wanted to point out regarding Waluigi's design is something very minor, but kind of funny to me. I'm not sure if this is something consistent for Waluigi's design, but I really like this design choice nonetheless. If you look closely at one of his renders for Super Mario Party, the logo on his cap is actually a sticker, which we can tell because the top right corner is peeling off a small bit. This is just something incredibly minor that you wouldn't really be able to tell with just a passing glance, but I think it's pretty funny because of what it implies. My interpretation is that unlike the other hat-wearing guys who have their caps tailored to their liking, Waluigi doesn't seem to have the funds to do so, opting instead to DIY his hat. It does a pretty good job, all things considered. Maybe even stole one of Luigi's and modified it. It would make sense. I mean, Nintendo Power states he's stolen Luigi's underwear before, so I wouldn't put it past the guy. You would think being Luigi's rival and Wario's... brother? Cousin? It's never really been clear what the relation between the two is. You would think they're brothers given the fact that they're supposed to be the evil versions of the Mario Bros, and also because they look pretty similar, but no. Apparently the two are actually not related. Regardless, you would think being Luigi's rival and Wario's... partner would make this guy a pretty big deal. I mean, Luigi and Wario both have their own spin-off game series, they've both appeared in various mainline titles, and they're both in Super Smash Bros. Surely Waluigi would get something cool too, right? Well, if you're one of the many avid Waluigi fans out there, you would surely know by now that within the character's 23 years of existence, Waluigi has never had any of these things. As of now, Waluigi has made a whopping zero appearances in the mainline Mario series, has never had his own game, and has been relegated to an assist trophy in Smash. One has to wonder, why? Why is Waluigi given the short end of the stick? Why is he only relevant in Mario sports games and other spin-off titles? Unfortunately, we don't really have an answer. It could be maybe Nintendo just doesn't like him or see him as that important. Maybe it's because he was technically created by Camelot and not in-house. Or maybe they just hate him and don't want to see him succeed. Whatever the reason may be, where Nintendo sees a failure, I see potential. For probably the rest of this video, I want to go over points in Mario's history where I think it would have been fun and made sense to include Waluigi. My only real condition is that the game has to be one that came out after Waluigi was created. So pretty much everything before the year 2000 stays the same. With all that being said, I just want to briefly state that these are all just my own opinions. You're entitled to your own Waluigi-related opinions. But these ones are mine. So yeah, without further ado, let's get started. The first title I think that would have been fun to include Waluigi in is Wario Land 4 for the GBA. Now I know typically the only playable character before this point in the Wario Land series was Wario himself, but throwing in Waluigi would have been a fun addition. Perhaps you could choose between which character you wanted to play as, or maybe even swap between the two on the fly. Maybe Waluigi could have played differently from Wario, having a floatier jump and being a more speedy character. He could also have a lesser version of Wario's charge, with him being able to only defeat enemies and not destroy blocks. Or maybe power up Wario's charge so only he can destroy the harder blocks. Adding Waluigi in this game could have been a good chance to show off his personality. Regardless of how he's implemented into the game, I think he would have looked really cool riding along with Wario in his car or posing with him after each level. Plus, he could be in every Wario Land title going forward. Another series that Waluigi could have easily been a part of alongside Wario would be the WarioWare series. I'll be honest, I haven't really played any of the WarioWare games, which is why I'm grouping them together because I know there's a lot of them. So this entry may be brief, but I think I pretty much know what they're about. There's a whole new cast of characters introduced within this series, and I think Waluigi could have easily been slipped in alongside them. Waluigi being in the Mario and Luigi series may sound like a stretch, but hear me out. While I don't think there is an existing entry in the franchise for him to appear, I think it would have been really cool to add him and Wario in an entirely new game. The Mario and Luigi series really adds some kind of new gimmick with each new entry. With Partners in Time, it was time travel. With Bowser's Inside Story, it was going inside of Bowser and playing as him, etc. Creating a new game where you get to play as Mario, Luigi, Wario, and Waluigi 
Sounds like a really fun idea. Ideally, this game would be on the DS and come out after Superstar Saga, but before Partners in Time, making this the new second entry in the series. With the DS having four buttons, Mario and Luigi could be controlled with their usual A and B, with Wario being controlled by X and Waluigi being controlled by Y. For the story, perhaps the four characters need to work together to defeat a common enemy or begrudgingly team up. Maybe Wario's charge move could be implemented instead of him using a hammer. Or maybe we could see what it would look like if Wario and Waluigi made use of the power-ups. Regardless, a Mario and Luigi game featuring Wario and Waluigi would be awesome. I've always thought that concept would be a fun idea ever since I played Bowser's Inside Story when I was younger. I also remember seeing a lot of fan art of this concept, so I assume there are others that share my sentiment for Wario and Waluigi being in one of these games. For this next entry, Super Mario 64 DS, I have two ideas. The obvious answer here would be to add Waluigi to the fourth door in the character selection room. I'm sure most of you watching this video have heard of the infamous hoax where Waluigi was supposedly in the game. Similar to the L's real hoax from the original version of Super Mario 64, this one, while not quite reaching the same levels of attention, was still fairly popular. There was even this very convincing fake image titled Purple Prizes, which showcased various screenshots of Waluigi in different levels of the game, as well as his character door fully realized. It even provided hints towards unlocking him, suggesting that the player has to collect every star in the game and be the fastest foot racer in the land. If I had to guess what this means, maybe it's referring to beating Koopa the Quick in his two racing challenges. It also says you have to challenge the Rabbit King. I like the idea of needing to defeat a unique boss to unlock Waluigi, as the other characters have their own boss fights in order to unlock them as well. Anyways, I feel like the main driving force behind this hoax was the previously mentioned fourth door in the character selection room. The appearance of this door in this specific room feels like the game is suggesting that there is an extra playable character to be found, with many believing the said character was Waluigi. It kind of makes sense when you think about it. I mean, most of the characters in this game are the hat-wearing humans. Having Waluigi as a secret unlockable character would help complete the set. Plus, you could chunk the whole secret character thing up to him not being as well known as the others. Also, look at these doors. On one side, we have Mario and Luigi. On the other side, which is symmetrical, might I add, we have Wario and this mysterious fourth door. Mario and Wario's doors are opposite of each other. Of course, the two mirror each other. So naturally, on the opposite side of Luigi's door would be Waluigi's. In reality, though, this door is in fact not Waluigi's, and all it really holds is another secret star, serving no real purpose afterwards. As far as we know, he was never in the game. Funny enough though, in the original version of Super Mario 64, it has been found that Luigi was actually in the game at earlier stages of development. In 2020, there was a huge data leak from Nintendo, where a large amount of their internal material was made public. In regards to Super Mario 64, a pre-release version of the game was leaked which included the game's source code and some development assets. Among these assets were textures and models specifically for Luigi, which fans quickly reconstructed to show what it would have looked like in-game. Now I bring this up because... who knows? Maybe the same thing could be true for Waluigi one day. This whole Luigi thing was found 24 years after the game came out. Maybe Waluigi was planned to be in the game. Maybe his assets lie somewhere deep inside a pre-release version of 64DS. Or maybe he never even was considered for the game. Regardless, anything is possible. But right now we just don't know the secrets of 64DS's development just yet. Now on to my second idea. It may be a little bold, but it's a fun idea nonetheless. Swap Yoshi out with Waluigi. Now I know what you may be thinking. What? Get rid of Yoshi. But Yoshi's awesome. And don't get me wrong, I love being able to play as Yoshi. It's really cool that he was added into this game, and it's really the only time where you get to play as him in a 3D Mario title. But why not give Waluigi the spotlight for once? Yoshi is the first character you play as upon booting up the game, and having that instead be Waluigi would definitely shake things up a bit. It would be an interesting scenario where the other three characters have already tried and failed leaving the fate of the castle slash kingdom to an unlikely hero, Waluigi. Of course, a lot would need to be changed. Waluigi would need something to differentiate him from the other characters, and he would need his own power flower ability. But if Nintendo really wanted to, they could have made this work. In the end though, I'm satisfied with the game we got. It's a neat little expansion of the original Super Mario 64. There's three new playable characters that all play slightly different from Mario, more stars to collect, it's portable, although I suppose the original version is now as well with the Switch, but it's also the version I played growing up, so it has that added nostalgia bonus. For me, at least. The controls could be better. They're really the only thing holding me back from saying this game is better than the original. But if you can try your best to look past that, you've got a very solid game on your hands with loads of content and tons of replayability. Maybe one day I'll even do a review of it on my channel. Okay, this next entry is going to be a little bit different, but kind of similar to the Mario and Luigi entry. I'm not really talking about a game that exists in Mario's history, but a concept for a theoretical game that comes from Mario Kart DS. Of course, I'm talking about Waluigi Pinball. As I've said many times in this video, Waluigi does not have his own game. It's disappointing to me, I'm not sure about everyone else, but I feel like if Nintendo had to do literally the bare minimum for this character and giving him a game, it would be a Waluigi-themed pinball game. I'm sure many people know of and like the Waluigi Pinball track, 
So why not give the poor guy his own pinball spinoff? Hell, they could even just reskin Mario Pinball Land. Maybe upscale the graphics a little bit and create some new levels or mechanics, and bam, you've got a really bare-bones Waluigi game. But at least it would be his own game. Alternatively, Nintendo could go all out for a Waluigi-themed pinball game and just make a whole new thing, creating a more unique and stylized pinball game based on the Waluigi pinball track. It's too bad this isn't already a thing. I mean, a spin-off where the concept comes from a spin-off featuring the most spin-off of characters, it just makes complete sense to me. This might be another brief entry. It's Wario, Master of Disguise for the DS. I was debating whether or not to include this one, but I thought, you know, it would make some sort of sense for Waluigi to appear in this game. While this is another title I haven't played, I tried watching some gameplay and looked to see what other online reviewers think about the game, so for the most part I feel like I understand what the game is about. Obviously, Waluigi needs to appear alongside Wario for any cutscenes, but honestly I'm stumped in terms of gameplay, which was why I considered not adding this to the list. Wario already has tons of different disguises that provide him different abilities, so throwing Waluigi into the mix is difficult. The only thing I can th really think of is as an alternate playable character that plays the exact same similarly to how Luigi plays identical to Mario in most games. It's not much, but I'm sure people would have enjoyed having the option to play as Waluigi instead. Another Wario title I haven't played, but one that I love the art style of, Wario Land Shake It for the Wii. Similar to Wario Land 4, I just think it would have been fun to include Waluigi in the Wario Land series. He would look amazing in this art style, and it would have been fun just to see the two going on an interesting adventure like this one. With this title also being on the Wii, perhaps they could have also introduced simultaneous multiplayer into the Wario Land series, but only up to two players. Since the Wii was able to do simultaneous co-op with up to four players for New Super Mario Bros. Wii, it's not impossible to say it could have been done as well for this game with just two players. Maybe the camera could focus on whichever player has the most coins, since Wario is all about making money. Speaking of New Super Mario Bros. Wii, I'm sure you might have seen this one coming. It's New Super Mario Bros. Wii. Now look, I do like NSMBW. It's one of the first Mario games I ever played, and it was the first 2D Mario game to be on a home console since Super Mario World. But let's not kid ourselves. It's not exactly super original. All of the world themes from this game are taken straight from New Super Mario Bros. DS, and then will continue to be used in each future entry, with the only new one being World 9, the special world. But even then, the individual levels all use themes from previous worlds, which is kind of lame in my opinion. They could have done something really cool here, like have the levels take place in space, or maybe even the moon which could then alter the gravity so you can jump higher. There's a lot of potential for levels in that idea alone. In my opinion, the most notable things about this game are the return of the Koopalings, who would also be reused in each future entry, the return of Yoshi, who now can't be taken outside levels, the new power-ups, and the introduction of simultaneous co-op with up to four players. Can you guess which characters you can play as besides Mario and Luigi? Two random toads. What? You're telling me. From this huge roster of available characters, the best that Nintendo could come up with is... a yellow and a blue toad? Neither of them are even the main one! Okay, maybe they just wanted characters that all had their own unique colors, sure. But I have to ask, why not then go with Wario and Waluigi? I mean, come on. They're right there! It will always be so disappointing to me that two toads were picked over these guys. It's just such a lame decision. Wario was already in Super Mario 64 DS, so what's stopping him from being in this game? It's the textbook definition of a missed opportunity. However, there is some saving grace here. Leave it to the fans to do what Nintendo don't. There's a simple mod created by a user named KTH that replaces the two toads with Wario and Waluigi. Genius. Their models aren't as high quality as Mario and Luigi's, they can look a little bit janky at times, and they still have the toad voices, but for a free mod, it gets the job done and does it well. Kudos to you, KTH wherever you are. New Super Mario Bros. U is pretty much the same case as NSMBW, but a little worse. It uses the same world themes, but I do like the idea of Bowser taking over Peach's castle and transforming it, although the overall theme is still kind of the same lava-filled final castle area. Boom Boom is also added to the adventure, taking over these little towers that the Kooplings used to occupy, but he's pretty forgettable to be honest. There's also the return of the baby Yoshis, which function way differently from how they did in Super Mario World, and can even be taken outside levels in like the adult Yoshis for some reason. The only new power-up introduced is the Super Acorn, which I think is a good addition. I like the way the gliding works and how you can stick to walls, but other than that, it does seem a little forgettable. There's not even a cool mod that replaces the Toads with Wario and Waluigi. What a bummer. While I'm not a huge fan of NSMBU for its lack of originality, I wouldn't say it's the worst of the new Super Mario Bros. games. I still would like playing it if I had to, but I don't think I would choose to very often. Finally, a title that isn't a Wario or Mario game. It's Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon for the 3DS. You may be asking yourself, why would you put Waluigi in this one and not the first one? Well, it's simple. With the first Luigi's Mansion, it's the first entry in his own new franchise, so I think it's better that the original game focuses mainly on Luigi. Sure, Mario is there, but he's meant to be rescued and isn't the protagonist like usual. 
so the focus isn't on him much at all. Now with the sequel, I think it would be really interesting if Waluigi played a more major, antagonistic role. Really show off the fact that he's Luigi's rival. Perhaps he's teamed up with King Boo to get revenge on Luigi. Maybe you could make it so he's the one who gave King Boo the knowledge of the Dark Moon. Towards the end of the game, Waluigi could even kidnap E. Gad which could lead into the final boss fight somehow, with Luigi fighting to save both Mario and Egad. A cool idea for a boss could be King Boo and Waluigi combining their forces by having King Boo possess him, making the boss a kind of new character possessed Waluigi. It would be really awesome if after you beat him, King Boo turns on Waluigi and puts him in a painting as well, making it so you have to rescue him now also. Those are most of the ideas I have for adding Waluigi into Dark Moon. Overall, I think having Waluigi actually being a menacing antagonist for Luigi is something that would be cool to see. I mean, after all, Mario and Wario fought in their first encounter, but Luigi and Waluigi never really do the same. Let's keep this Luigi game train rolling with Luigi's Mansion 3 for the Nintendo Switch. Honestly, there's not much I really want to change about this game. It's a pretty solid entry in the Luigi's Mansion series, and probably also my favorite as well. Gooigi was also a fun new addition. I enjoyed using him to solve various puzzles, and he was pretty charming for a Luigi-shaped pile of goo. He's also used in the game's co-op mode, with the second player taking full control over him. He plays pretty much identical to Luigi, but has slight differences from him as well. He's got a pretty small amount of health, so he can die pretty easily, but he can infinitely respawn and heal himself. Being made of goo, he can also access areas Luigi is unable to since he can go through things such as spikes and grates, although he'll melt if he touches water and disintegrate when he touches fire. While I do like Gooigi, he's a little more on the bland side for me. He doesn't speak at all or have any real defining character traits, so for the most part, what you see is what you get. He's a carbon copy of Luigi and kind of a boring one at that. Now you know what would have been really interesting to see? Waluigi as player 2. Let's say for the sake of this hypothetical, Waluigi had previously appeared in Dark Moon as an antagonist, and is now appearing in the third game as a supporting character on Luigi's side. It's kind of hard to think of a reason why these two would be working together, but I think I can come up with something. Perhaps the Mario Bros lost a bet to Wario and Waluigi, and now have to take them on an expensive vacation. While on their trip, King Boo shows up and puts everyone into paintings like the original, everyone except Luigi and Waluigi forcing the unlikely duo to work together for once. And from there, the game plays out like usual. While I am happy with the final product we received, it would have been really cool to have Waluigi be the player too in this adventure. All you have to do is give him his own Poltergust, and just like that, he could play identical to Luigi. Although I suppose we would miss out on the fun gimmicks that Gooigi provides, such as going through objects and the weakness to water. Now on to one of the most recent entries, Super Mario Bros. Wonder for the Nintendo Switch. This is a pretty similar case to the new Super Mario Bros. games. When I initially heard about this game's announcement, I was really hoping Wario and Waluigi just might be playable characters for once. I thought Wario might have had a more of a chance to make it in since he's honestly a more important character than Waluigi, but I still held out hope for the poor purple guy. In the end though, while there were a good handful of new playable characters, including Daisy, debuting for the first time as a playable character in a mainline Mario title, Wario and Waluigi didn't end up making the cut. It's disappointing, but kind of expected at this point. Maybe one day these two will have their time to shine together in a mainline Mario title. And that's everything. I've now gone through Mario's history and picked out points where I think Waluigi had some potential to shine. It's really a shame Nintendo doesn't use him more often. I've always liked this crazy character and wondered what an official Waluigi game would look like. While I can't say his design is super original, since it's been done almost three times before, I've always wanted to see Nintendo do something more with the character. Maybe make him more than just a spin-off character by exploring something about him. Before I end the video, I wanted to briefly highlight two fan games as honorable mentions that actually feature Waluigi as a playable character. The first one is Super Mario Bros. and the Midas Machine by Team Midas. As of now, there's only a demo available to play, but what's here is pretty interesting. The game sees Mario, Luigi, Wario, and Waluigi all teaming up to stop Bowser and Captain Syrup, who are also joining forces, from turning the Mushroom Kingdom to gold with the titular Midas Machine. While each character does play the same for the most part, they've each got their own strengths and weaknesses, as well as one special ability each. Mario can wall jump and has the most well-rounded stats, and Luigi has a special high jump similar to the one featured in Super Mario Bros. 2. Wario plays pretty similarly to how he did in Wario Land, with him being able to charge and pick up enemies. He can't run, but when he gets a Fire Flower instead of changing the color of his clothes, he gets the Dragon Hat from Wario Land that plays like how it did in that game. In fact, the Fire Flower seems to work slightly different for each character as well. With Mario, they work like usual, with Luigi, they fly straight ahead, and with Waluigi, they're shot at an upward angle. Waluigi is the quickest character, with his special ability being able to... become thin? To be honest, this whole idea seems a tad bit gimmicky. It's hard to imagine how much this ability could actually be applied throughout the game without it feeling forced, but I'll cut the developers some slack. Waluigi doesn't really have much to work with, honestly, so I'm sure they came up with the best idea that they could think of. Now, if you know anything about Mario fan games, then you may have seen this one coming, it's Psycho Waluigi by Thunder Dragon. Once again, the fans come through for Waluigi, but this time in a major way, giving the guy his own fully developed fan game. This is actually a surprisingly well-made experience. 
creating a whole new spin on the traditional Mario formula, similar to how Wario did with Wario Land. It honestly feels like this game could be an officially licensed Nintendo product with how well made it is. I really can't believe they haven't done anything like this themselves. In this game, you play as Waluigi on a brand new adventure through the world of Unconscia. Throughout the game, you make use of Waluigi's new psychic powers granted to him by a being known only as Psycho Iris, using said powers to pick up coins, blocks, enemies, and anything else in your path in order to forcefully take over this new land. I'm not going to go super in-depth into the game right now, but if you have the time to give this completely free game a chance, then I highly recommend you do so and experience it for yourself. That's pretty much everything I wanted to talk about. We covered a lot here today and I want to thank you for sticking around if you've made it this far into the video. If you're a fellow Waluigi enjoyer and want to see the guy debut in a mainline Mario title, hit that like and subscribe button. In the meantime, I'm going to go finish playing Psycho Waluigi. Hope you enjoyed the video. See you next time.